Let me tell you a story of glamour and magic, quite literally. What is glamour? Glamour, well, it is raw creativity, it is raw dreaming, it is the stuff of change, it was, allows this world to improve, to change, to progress, to transform. It is the essence of the dreaming. And it's what keeps us changelings alive. It's what powers our fey means. It's what powers chimerical reality. It's what we need to go out into this lovely world and see and make it lovelier still or make it just a little bit ugly in a really beautiful way. So how do we find this glamour? Well, by tradition, there are five ways of doing so. Yeah, it's quite often you'll find three ways or five ways or seven ways in stories, sometimes four if you're doing carbon points. But in this story, there are five ways of doing so. The most easiest or the most obvious is reverie. You inspire others. I hang around with a lot of storytellers and authors and whisper suggestions into their ears while they sleep. And then I see it written the next day in their books and harvest the glamour from this. But there are other ways, any way of inspiring for great artists, great scientists, great philosophers, you can inspire them and you feed on their creation. And that is glorious and glamorous for all. Then there's rapture. That's when you turn the inspiration on yourself. I briefly touched that myself. In some of my better stories, of some of my better trips, I touched the raw essence of the dreaming and filled myself with glamour. It's a wonderful sensation. It is a perfect sensation. So I decided to stop it and try for something else. And I tried some ravaging. This is when you rip creativity out of others. It's an ugly way of doing it, which means I've only done it once or twice. It destroys the creativity in the artist or diminishes it for your personal selfish benefit. All, she, all changeling should try it once or twice. And all changelings should be content with just doing it once or twice. And then there's revelry. This is just a natural way of raising glamour for different types. The red caps, that, you haven't heard of red caps? Oh, I'll explain later. Very vicious and disgusting, deliberately disgusting dreams, born of nightmares. And when they are particularly disgusting, when others around them recoil, this gives them their natural glamour. Others, like trolls, can get them in more honourable circumstances. And when I've seen a sort of performance, a story, a flash mob that I've created, that revelry, that really unleashes it upon myself. And then, uh, yeah, so that's all the ways of getting glamour. But what, you said there was five and I've only told you four? Well, there is one way which even me as an unseely can't recommend doing, but it still exists. Rhapsody. You take an artist and you inspire them to huge heights. It sounds like reverie. Sounds pretty nice so far, right? You pump them full with your own glamour and they will create one work of art or whatever art means to them. One fantastic work of art such as they have never created before and will never create again. Because pretty much they will never create again. You have forced them to pour out all their creativity into one thing, one last work 
But after that, they're pretty much burnt out. And the worst of it all, you can only get glamour when you destroy that item. So one ultimate creative thing, burning out the artist, and you get the glamour when you destroy it. Now change is good, don't get me wrong, but not all change is worth doing, especially since this one is rather boring. It's just exploitation. But that's what you can do with glamour, to gather glamour. And glamour is good, but it's an ultimate seductive hook. And in every tale, every hook has a barb. The barb is bedlam. You'd be quite familiar with that. You call it craziness. No, you don't call it that nowadays? Well, I don't know. I don't know what you psychiatrists do. You probably slice it into 50 different categories and give them very precise names because you're so dull. Oh, that is what you do. Well, I guess right. But bedlam is when you go too much into the dreaming, too much into glamour, and you lose yourself. You need a little bit of banality to make the stories real. Imagine if I told you a story, and then the human fought a dragon. It produced a super laser. The super laser was powered by the stars. The stars burnt the dragon to a crisp and gave the boy a big cookie. The cookie turned out to make him immortal. There's no continuity. This is what Bedlam is like. Creativity all over the place. You lose your grounding. You lose the thread of your story. There is no story. There is just a series of vignettes. And you're lost. If you spend too long in a freehold, too long in the dreaming, especially if you walk off the silver path that guides you from one place of the dream to another, if you do that, then you will encounter bedlam. You will encounter madness. Even you. If I could get you into the dreaming somehow, leave you there long enough, you would go into this craziness. The cures to it are rather unpleasant. You have to be banal, focused, dull. Allow the banality within you to balance the madness. But yes, apart from that one thing, there is no drawback to glamour. It powers all the magics of the Fae. What magics can we do? Well, read a fairy tale, literally. What can you do in fairy tales? You can transform yourself, you can transform others. You can create wondrous things. You can change things into gold, um, which means you can change anything into anything. Gold is rather dull. You can a day can pass that is a year in the outside world or vice versa, so you can change time. You can move from places to places. You can jump. You can command others and force them to your will. You can make oaths that bind across the generations. Every story has a different type of magic. You can find your way home again. You can get people lost forever. And you can create wondrous castles. You can fade them in the daylight. You can do anything that a story can do. But like in all stories, every one of these things is a precise and specific art you need to learn. You can't just do all of these, but the details don't matter to the story. And so the details don't matter to you. Just bear in mind that this is all the sort of things that I might be able to do if you turn your back too long, if you turn off those cameras too long, if you get the cold steel away from here, I will be gone in a moment, leaving nothing but a laughing smile behind. Well, see you tomorrow. Be careful when you turn your back on me and leave today.